have civil rights. They really wanted to do something good. And these cold-blooded establishment people, they didn't want that. Mm -hmm. And so here they are saying this article discredits him. It's because this article in Politico certifies him. The fact that that was going on and, and, and that that was happening. And then I meet with prominent people that I run into that, that, that I've known for years. And they finally go, sitting there around their table at their home, they go, you know, Donald Trump was here a few years ago and we talked about you. You know, Donald Trump knows what's going on. You do your underground stuff, we'll do our above ground stuff, but we're going to save this republic. These aren't people giving me a con game. These aren't people that need to tell me bull. They know how dangerous I am politically if you screw me over or this country. They know I'm a pit bull that will not back down, that will never stop. And the fact is, our spirit of liberty, just like Steve Pachinik, former head of Black Ops for the State Department, said, like rock and roll came out of the South, you know, a mixture of white hillbillies and black blues folks, it is coming out of the swamps of Texas. And, and it's not Alex Jones, but it's that spirit of telling the truth, that spirit of not backing down. It's infectious, and it's spreading all over the world. It's the counter to the globalist cancer. Why wouldn't this pro-human message of liberty be positive in a time like this? Why, when great evil is coming, wouldn't there be people lifted up against it? And they won't be the perfect, won't be the perfect little fake Christian who says everything just right that opposes it. That's why evangelicals are going for Trump. So I turned down the governor sending the state police over, and when he was getting ready to run for president of the Secret Service, once he was the nominee, coming by Access TV and saying, hey, the governor likes you. You ought to go to lunch sometime. Because my sister went to school with his daughter. She's 15 years younger and 14 years younger, and I've been at barbecues with Bush and all the rest of it. Big, big freaking deal. You know, I got invited out to Midland one time. Oh, you ought to come to one of the Bush brothers' places. I'm only there two years. You got a lot of talent. I didn't take their hand. I didn't go to the White House meetings like the other big talk show hosts, even later, because I knew it was fake. I had discernment. This Trump thing is real, but we have to make Trump ours. We have to make him break with the system fully because he, he's being educated. He talks about his cold feet. He talks about it. He's, he's not sure at first. You know, will the country listen to him? And he's trying all his bravada, what he's seen work in the media. He admits all this. That's not who Trump is behind the scenes. He's doing that to a brain-damaged, dumbed-down public, dumbing it all down, playing a character for them, hoping then that they resonate with him. And, and here's what I'm going to say in closing. And then throw it back to numbers coming, then I'll pop back in with the Facebook mentions and a little bit more here in a little while. But Donald Trump is the symbol of man. Just like Alex Jones is or, 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 or Darren McBreen is, we're, or Jakari Jackson, or Lee and McAdoo, a symbol of humanity. We're here, we're not perfect, we don't have all the answers, but we know things are wrong, we know a scientific tyranny is coming into place, we're deciding to fight back with our oratory, with our skills, with our ideas against scientific systems of manipulation. And so that's why the Bilderberg Group and Davos openly say destroy Trump. That's why they openly say we must stop him. That's why, because they realize that whether he's real or not, whether he's perfect or not, none of us are, he represents resistance against tyranny like a Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., like a Bobby Kennedy or a JFK, or a Malcolm X for that matter. Because he represents that office and is the, the example of the grassroots rebellion, the explosion against tyranny, that even if he worked for Hillary, which I know he doesn't now, look how he's going after it, it wouldn't matter because what he changed just now, the death, the death blows to the open borders, the death blows to selling our jobs overseas are so strong, they go on past Trump. So what you get is banging a gong. Was the, was the hammer hitting the gong real? It doesn't matter. It made the sound. And you can't unring that. See, it's spiritual laws. You judge a tree by its fruit. Even someone who's evil, who tries to pretend to be good, many times becomes good. Someone who is good, who pretends to be evil, many times becomes evil. These are the deeper secrets. You can reach out to the grassroots like this at a real level and challenge the whole system and be a fraud or you'll be destroyed. But it doesn't matter. If they can shoot Trump down, whether he's real or not, then they shoot down our hopes and aspirations. In this phase, we're fighting locally. We're fighting at the county and city level. We're fighting in ideas. We're fighting for medical rights. We're fighting for pro-life. We're fighting for lower taxes. We're fighting for national sovereignty. Donald Trump is not the end-all, be-all of our war. But just as he's hijacked the mainstream media, we hijacked the narrative of Donald Trump 
and bring his listeners and populists and that big 30-40% that wasn't politically involved into InfoWars. And Donald Trump brings us into his events. Donald Trump tweets our articles in his platform to communicate the info war. And he even, it was telegraphed, let's just put it that way, planned for them to go after him, plan on my show, and they dropped the ball. He's just waiting for the right time to do it again. And we're even telling the enemy what we're doing so that, so that, so that he can really be the populist. And he knows where to come to find the true bona fide populism, and that's InfoWars.com and what we're doing here tonight. And all you, the viewers, who do not stand beside us or behind us, as I've said a thousand times, at the heart of the information warfare. So I, I, I challenge David Knight, all of you there tonight, to go over this article where, where it talks about, you know, Trump planned all this out. Well, of course he planned all this out. They act like that's a bad thing. They know that he knew that the media was a rotting facade, that he could challenge them, that he could rush in, that he could stand against them, that, that he could laugh in their face. And now the facade crumbles on the CNBC debate and, and, and Trump leaving and, and, you know, now still at the head of Iowa. So let's go back. I'm going to be watching here, obviously, the latest returns for the Iowa caucuses as we go beyond. But here's the thing. Fighting, standing up, getting involved, promoting ideas, saying we're great, we're going to be strong, we're going to build a free market, we're not failures. That is the beginning of the idea that will change the direction of this country and the world. Back to the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas, uh, with, of course, uh, the great crew there breaking down the analysis tonight, and I'll be back towards the end here as the Iowa caucus numbers come in. But it is emerging. I mean, am I correct? I looked 10 minutes ago before I went live. It's a dead heat between Trump and Cruz with Rubio at 23 or so. Uh, and then we've got uh, Hillary about three points ahead of Sanders. Is that correct? That's correct, Alex. Uh, there's about three points between uh, Cruz and Trump and another three points between Trump and Rubio. But, of course, as delegates go, uh, they're showing them right now on CNN that all three would get five delegates. Carson would get one delegate at 10%. Uh, nobody else would get any delegates. That's the way that they would be apportioning that. That's about 77% uh, of the uh, totals have come in. And what Alex was just saying, Alex, you still there? Yes, sir. What you were just saying about Salon uh, trying to attack Trump and yet by doing so made him, uh, showed him to be more authentic. I thought that was interesting because that's what I saw in that article in Politico where they were talking about his 18th century foreign policy, saying that we haven't had somebody that really stood up to put America first uh, over the globalist interest since the 1940s with, with exactly. Taft, Whether Robert Taft. Yeah. He's not there. They don't like somebody they don't own. Yeah. It's just what he said. Listen, I don't want their money. I'm not going with them. That's what they hate is he's not a puppet. Yeah. yeah. It's the return of a man. It's the return of a president. Well, he's still in a pretty good position here because if he gets the same number of delegates as everybody else, this is essentially a uh, – they're, they're so close, two or three points uh, down from the first place. That gives Cruz some bragging rights, but they're still uh, neck and neck. And then they're going into uh, New Hampshire and other places where... Well, Trump's uh, 15 points ahead. Yeah, yeah, where he's got a big lead. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it'll be interesting to see that. And Alex, also, there was another article that came out today on uh, was linked to uh, on the Drudge Report from the Texas Tribune talking about how the feds are planning to cut border monitoring by 50%. And so you've got governor... Wild. Yeah, you got governor... Exactly. Uh, but they're going to take it down to even half of the ineffectiveness that it was last year. So you've got Republican Governor Abbott and Democrat uh, Congressman Quaylar, uh asking Homeland Security, what are you doing? I mean, this is bipartisan, and they're saying this absolutely makes the no sense. It's the country. Yeah. It's global government. Yes. They're going to use, they've already collapsed Mexico. They're going to use that to collapse the Southwest and bring in an international emergency with the U.N. That's been the plan. If you go back to the Banff Canada documents, 2007, the Judicial Watch sued and got, we cover it in my film Endgame. They say we're going to use border crisis, biological crisis like the flu, and monetary crisis to bring in North American Union integration by stealth. That's a close quote. And that's it. That's what they're doing. I'm going to throw it back to you guys for the next 20 minutes or so. How long are we planning to go here as these numbers come in? Another 30, 40 minutes? Yeah, probably to the bottom of the hour. I think we'll have all the numbers in by then. I don't think they're going to change much. They haven't been changing as these so uh, numbers like, have been going so, up. So it doesn't like Cruz is in a dead heat with Trump or ahead. He's ahead three points. He's got 28%. Uh, Trump has 25%, and Rubio has 22%. But the number of delegates that they get is the same. The top three would all get all five according delegates. To CNN. My Sorry? That's all according Microsoft to what? Microsoft is telling. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. we, we're trying to get pull our Microsoft. Uh, it seems like the website has crashed. Does <laughs> it come back up? 
So, yeah. you know, I'm not sure if that is on screen. Microsoft there with or not. the Microsoft tally. <laughs> but of course, I think the interesting thing is, on is that this was a chance, uh, this, this could have been the last stand for Cruz. It was absolutely uh, imperative that he come out ahead, even if slightly ahead. But he still has an uphill road to try to defeat Trump in terms of these remaining uh, 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 primaries coming up in this month. And it was also imperative for Sanders that he not lose to Clinton because she seems to be leading in the rest of the contests that are coming up in South Carolina, Nevada, New Hampshire. And so he really That's needed right. to at least uh, look good here and, and then also in New Hampshire. Then he would be on equal footing with her. But they basically have uh, split this 50-50. Right. Uh, it's 50.4 versus, uh, you know, 49% for Sanders. And they're going to get the same number of delegates. And, of course, O'Malley isn't going to get anything. He's at a half a percent. Well, listen, guys, I'm going to keep watching. I'm going to punch out here and here with Jakari, Leanne. Uh, and uh, David and all you have to say, and I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Lord willing, with a syndicated uh, daytime show to break all this down. But remember, folks, they're doing everything they can to not get this information out, to make sure nobody knows about Infowars.com or the new media. Spread the word. You have the power, folks. You are the solution to all of this. And Trump is just a manifestation of the huge uprising against tyranny. Whether he's real or not, he is that manifestation, that, that figurehead. Thank you, Alex. That's Alex Jones. And we're going to continue to look at the returns as they come in until we get a little bit closer. I don't think anything is going to be changing much. It hasn't changed. We're at about 80 percent of those of the uh, Democrat caucus that have come in, and it hasn't changed uh, since it was about uh, 50 percent or so. Mm -hmm. uh, how about uh, Darren McBreen? Does uh, Darren have anything that he wants to come in? Kit, Kit is at the Twitter <laughs> station. Let's go to Kit. Kit. Yes, I just got word about 10 minutes ago. Uh Martin O'Malley has officially suspended his campaign for the nomination. Yeah, well, that's not uh, unexpected when you get a half a percent. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's about time to get off, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, speaking of, but speaking about the Democratic race, uh, this is a very good sign that I think the Democratic uh, establishment is really freaking out right now because Hillary Clinton, she can't even really pull ahead from Bernie Sanders. I mean, she, she might win tonight, but maybe by one or two percentage points. Mm-hmm. So she's not that sellable anymore. And then she's got this whole email, email gate scandal just rolling, rolling around her head that right. she might, might be indicted. And I talked to Ron Paul this weekend at the Mises Circle in Houston. He said something I thought really interesting, the fact that uh, Lyndon B. Johnson dropped out of the race in 68 on March 31st. The race was on, the uh, election was on November 5th. And that's only about, that's still about two months away. So the Democrats, the establishment, they still have time to pull away from Hillary and, you know, get a new candidate in office, if uh, not in office, but in the race, mm -hmm. whether it be Joe Biden or even John Kerry. Or Bloomberg. Can't, and, oh, and that's the question. Well, I don't really know if they can do it. We'll talk about when we come back. I'm not sure if they can get in if they haven't been in on the ballot. So there's, there's deadlines for them to get on the ballot. I think that may be one of the reasons why they've got Bloomberg coming up. We'll talk about that when we come back. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're going to crash. You're going to feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce